Good afternoon everyone. For today's video, I want to make it all about harvesting, storing, and curing sweet potatoes. But before I begin, it is a very windy day here in North Carolina, so I want to start the video inside, and that's why I have this headset on, because the wind noise is just terrible outside. When I take you outside to show you my sweet potatoes in a moment, I'm going to show you a bed that I planted back in the spring, and I planted them using sweet potato slips. And all a sweet potato slip is, is it's the little tiny vine that you'll buy in a six cell tray right alongside all the other spring vegetables from a big box store. I think I got mine for three bucks for a six cell tray uh, from Lowe's back in May. And it's now November 17th, so I'm going to show you the results of those slips being in the ground for six months. Now, a couple of things about sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are actually not related to white potatoes. White potatoes are a nightshade, like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. And white potatoes actually like cool weather. That's why they do well in places like Ireland. It's because they like cool summers. Sweet potatoes, on the other hand, are actually the root of a type of morning glory vine. They are not an actual potato. They're a morning glory root and they actually thrive in hot, humid conditions. So they do very well here in the south. So I decided to take a gamble, and I bought a six-pack of Beauregard sweet potatoes from Lowe's back in May. They've been in the ground for six months. And harvesting sweet potatoes is a little bit of an art form. Um, people say, how long should I wait before I harvest the sweet potatoes? Well, that depends how large you want them to be. Remember, the sweet potatoes that we are eating are the roots of the morning glory vine. So the longer you leave them in the ground, the larger the roots are going to grow. So generally speaking, you want to get the largest sweet potatoes possible. You want to leave them in the ground as long as possible. So what you have to do is you have to monitor the tops of the sweet potatoes. At the very least, you want to leave your sweet potatoes in the ground until the green morning glory leaves start turning a shade of yellow or orange, and that will start happening in the fall. However, you can also leave them in the ground all the way up until frost. You can let your sweet potato vines get frosted and killed off, and the sweet potatoes themselves will be protected because the ground will keep the sweet potatoes themselves protected. The ground will not freeze. What you absolutely must do, though, is if you live in an area where the ground is prone to freezing, you have to get them out before there is any chance of the ground freezing because those sweet potatoes cannot freeze in the ground or they will get damaged. Now, I'm going to take you outside in a moment and show you my sweet potatoes, and I'll let you know I did let my sweet potatoes get hit by a frost slash freeze. We got our first freeze of the year this week. It was about 29 degrees, and that cooked all of my sweet potato vines. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside, and I'm going to cut off all of the vines and remove them, and then I'm going to gently with gloves on my hands, dig around and try and find those sweet potato roots. And I'm going to be gentle. If you've purchased sweet potatoes in the store before, and I'm sure you have, you'll know the outsides are very tough. Well, that's only because those sweet potatoes have been cured. When we go outside now and I dig up these roots fresh, the roots are going to be very soft. And they have to be cured first before they actually can be handled, or else you will uh, you will strip away the outside layer and you'll damage them. So I'm going to be very careful to dig them up. I'm going to leave all the dirt on the sweet potato. I'm not going to wipe the dirt off, uh, aside from large clumps. I'm going to leave them still pretty dirty. And then after I dig them up, I will take you inside and I'll show you the two-step curing process of the sweet potato. So right here, you can see my bed of sweet potatoes. I planted these slips back in May. It's been six months. It's now November. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut all of the tops off of those sweet potato slips, and I'm going to remove all of the vines. All right, now that I've removed all of the sweet potato vines, I'm going to put on a pair of gloves, and I'm going to gently dig around the soil and try and find every single sweet potato that I can. So the first thing we're going to do is just yank up at the slips and see what comes out. Oh, wow. Here's a, here's a few nice little sweet potatoes right here. And I'm going to set them over here. And remember to be gentle because these are not cured. They can be damaged very easily and scratched very easily. Oh, look at 
the size of this guy right here. Huge, just massive. This is pretty incredible guys. The production of these things is just off the charts. You can see them all over here and I'm still digging and finding little bits of roots everywhere. And this is what it takes to harvest sweet potatoes. You really just have to dig in with a pair of gloves and see what you can find. And here's a big one all the way over here. And here is what the sweet potato harvest looks like. All of these sweet potatoes came from six slips that I bought for three bucks. That yield is absolutely incredible. And some of them are huge. They have to be at least two to three pounds a piece. This is my first time growing sweet potatoes and it definitely won't be my last because I am really impressed with the production. Now we're gonna take you inside and show you how to cure them in a two-step process. And here is our sweet potato harvest. Now that we have harvested them all, the next process that we have to do is cure the sweet potatoes. And this process is absolutely critical. You cannot skip this step. When you harvest your sweet potatoes, the sweet potatoes are almost entirely starch with virtually no sugar content. The curing process is essential because this is the process that slowly converts the starch content into sugars and also will help heal any nicks or cuts and abrasions on the skin of the sweet potato. So after you immediately harvest your sweet potatoes, they're not edible. They have to go through this curing process in order to be sweet and edible. Now what we have right here are two containers full of sweet potatoes. On the left I have a baker's half sheet with a cooling rack under it. That way it'll allow for air circulation underneath the smaller potatoes. For the larger potatoes I'm just going to leave them standing up inside the bin and hopefully that'll provide adequate circulation. Now there are two steps of curing that we must do. The very first step will take place in a warm humid environment. The sweet potatoes need to spend 4 to 14 days at 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and also at 80 to 90 percent humidity. That's the first step of the curing process. Now I've done research on the subject and most people seem to agree that about seven days is adequate. You don't really need to go too much longer, but you really can't go less than five or six days to get a good conversion of starch into sugar. After you do the warm and humid cure step, you then have to bring them into a cool, dry environment of about 55 to 65 degrees that is also dark and is low in humidity. Now the second step, that, that six to eight week process at 55 to 65 degrees, is pretty darn easy for most people throughout the country right now because it's November. So you can probably just place it in your basement or in your garage. Right now I'm in my garage, so I'm just going to place the sweet potatoes in a dark corner and the garage right now is just naturally about 55 to 65 degrees. But before I can get to that step, I'm going to have to cure them uh, in the hot, humid environment first. Now, if you have a thermostatically controlled space heater, what some people like to do is they take a, uh, a large closet or they take a small single bathroom and they put a bucket of water in the tub and then they put their sweet potatoes in uh, the bathtub with the space heater set to 85 degrees to keep that room really warm and the bucket of like a five gallon bucket of water in the tub will add humidity to the room and if you leave the door closed after about six or seven days that should uh, end the curing process uh, but I don't have a thermostatically controlled space heater and even if I did, I don't like the idea of running a space heater for a week straight. That sounds really expensive and really um, closing off a bathroom and not really making it accessible is not what I want to do. So I'm actually going to cure mine in the oven using a strand of incandescent Christmas lights, a 100 watt strand of mini lights, because that seems to provide just the amount of uh, just the right amount of heat in order to do that. And I'm going to take you inside and show you what I'm looking at. One last thing of critical importance to mention, 
Once you harvest your sweet potatoes, you need to begin the curing process immediately, as in within a few hours of digging them up. Once you start to dig up the sweet potatoes, they begin to immediately go into decline. So if you wait to begin the curing process, you're going to lose a lot of potential sugars. They decay rapidly, so within a few hours of digging them up, you really need to begin the warm, humid cooling process, or else your sweet potatoes just aren't going to come out right. And right here is my oven. Inside the oven, there is a strand of 100 incandescent mini Christmas lights. They are 40.8 watts a strand. And I have an extension cord that is running over to the Christmas lights that I have plugged in over here in the outlet. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow the humidity inside the oven to escape. So it's cracked probably about half an inch to an inch. And inside this oven, along with the Christmas lights, is a loaf pan that is full of water. That is going to provide our humidity. And if you can see, there is a candy cane thermometer in here. This has been in here for over two hours that I've been testing. And it's right at 87 to 88 degrees. And I want to be at about 85 to 90. So this is absolutely perfect. And for this extension cord that's running in, I'm also wrapping it in a hot hand so the, the extension cord does not get damaged from the weight of the oven. That is going to provide ventilation to allow some of the humidity to escape. So I'm going to take my two sweet potato bins and I'm going to place it in the oven and that, those incandescent Christmas lights along with the water is going to provide the perfect warm humid environment for about seven days for me to cure them. Here we are on Sunday, November 24th, and as promised, these sweet potatoes have been curing in the oven for the past seven days. And today is the seventh day, and I want to show you how beautifully this process has worked out, keeping the one strand of Christmas lights in the oven as a heat source. So using this thermometer right here, if you can see that, the potatoes on the bottom are 89.6 degrees, and the potatoes up top uh, looks to be, they're a little bit warmer. They're closer, they're in the upper 90s. But overall, 91 on the bottom, overall that's about where we want to be in the 80 to 90 degree range. And that's, that's about as close as we can get given the current situation with the temperatures outside. And here are the sweet potatoes taken out of the oven. I can't tell you how excited I am to finally get my oven back. Now we're going to take them outside to the garage for the second stage of the curing process. And here we are in my garage. All of the sweet potatoes on the left here will spend the next six to maybe eight weeks in this garage, which will hover in the 50 to 60 degree range on average. If you'll notice right next to it, I also have some white potatoes that I have curing. They want to be at the same temperature for roughly the same amount of time. If you're curious in how to grow white potatoes, I'll, I'll link to a video above. They are a little bit easier to cure than sweet potatoes and require less steps. So in about six weeks, we'll be able to eat our sweet potatoes, and there's nothing quite like a homegrown fresh sweet potato. They're so much better than what you can get at the grocery store. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is in the video description linked in my Amazon storefront, so please check it out. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all again next time.